So we have established rules of engagement for intracellular receptors. Now let's do the same thing for the receptors which are present on cell surface. So cell surface receptors, CSRs, we can divide them in three basic categories. One are the ion channel receptors. These receptors basically are present on the membrane. They bind, when they bind the signaling molecule, they open up. So these molecules, these receptors are shape of a donut or a pipe, but the pipe is collapsed. It doesn't open up till the signaling molecule attaches to it. When it does so, it, this pipe allows passage of specific ions and specific ions only. So if it is a sodium channel receptor, when a protein binds, the ligand binds that receptor, this ion channel receptor, it will open up. It will allow only sodium ions to pass through, not the potassium, not the calcium, nothing else. G protein linked receptors, these receptors, they bind their ligand and they go through a conformational change. The structure changes and in the cytoplasm attached to the inner part of the plasma membrane is a special protein called G protein. When these receptors are activated, G proteins bind these receptors. They in turn become activated. Activated G proteins diffuse along the plasma membrane, find another molecule, an affected molecule, which will cause an effect. They bind it and activate it. This is generally an enzyme which is activated by the G proteins. Enzyme linked receptors, these receptors, they generally dimerize when they bind their ligand. There are different mechanisms for that. When these two receptors come together, they either have an enzyme activity themselves or they can recruit other proteins in their cytoplasmic domain which have an enzymatic activity. So thereby when this enzymatic activity is activated, these enzymes generally act as kinases and attach phosphate groups to other molecules in the cytoplasm thereby activating it and those molecules can in turn go and cause an effect in the cell. So I will give you a response time. One of the quickest response times, one of them is the junction, neuromuscular junction. Here we can look at, here is an example of the ion channel receptors which we talked about earlier. At the tip of the neuron, there are vesicles which are loaded with acetylcholine. When a nerve impulse comes, the depolarization of the nerve causes special channels present at the, the junction, at neuromuscular junction to open up. These channels are sensitive to, to voltage difference, membrane potential. So when the nerve gets depolarized, the wave travels to the very tip where the neuron is forming a synapses with the muscle. These channels open up causing an influx of calcium which results in release of acetylcholine in the intracellular space. This acetylcholine binds the receptor, another ion channel receptor. This ion channel receptor is the sodium channel. When acetylcholine binds the sodium channel receptor, this opens up, causes an influx of sodium. This influx of sodium again causes a voltage or electrical difference. Remember, sodium ion is positively charged. This causes a change in membrane potential or electrical properties of the cell for sake of simplicity. There is another channel protein, receptor protein. This also is sensitive to the voltage difference. This is also a sodium channel protein. Remember, our, this channel opened up in response to acetylcholine. This channel is going to open up in response to voltage difference. When it opens up, more sodium ions travel in and the whole, pretty much the whole cell, the muscle cell becomes depolarized and that depolarization causes opening up of calcium channels. Calcium is stored in the endoplasmic reticulum and also it is present about thousand times more in concentration outside the cell. So calcium is released in response to voltage. Again, voltage is acting as a ligand, opening up the calcium channel. 
when the concentration of calcium increases in the cell it causes muscles to contract this is basically how our muscles contract in response to a nerve impulse now let's look at the basic design of signaling system some of the proteins what role these intermediate proteins play some of these proteins are the relay proteins mentioned right here these pass the message to the next signaling component in the chain and the second type of protein that we will talk about is the messenger proteins these messenger proteins they carry the signal from one part of the cell for example this protein is carrying the signal from the cytoplasm to the nucleus they are adapter proteins when shown here in this diamond this green diamond these adapter proteins link one signaling protein to another without themselves conveying the signal so they are basically connecting two signaling proteins they don't carry the signal themselves they are basically an adapter that allows two signaling molecules to interact one of them will pass on the signal to the next protein i'm sorry i uh, made a mistake the relay pro protein is right here not up there this is a different type of protein relay protein pass the message to the next signaling component okay let's look at the other components of the signaling system a generic signaling system amplifier proteins and transducers generally amplifiers and transducer proteins are the same they are either generally enzymes or ion channels they amplifier proteins for example they increase the signal they receive so there's an amplification of signal we will see this as pretty much a constant theme in the signaling systems that every signal that has been received by the cell pretty much every signal is amplified inside the cell so these enzymes they when they become active these amplifier proteins they result in production of lot of products that are carrying the signal and they interact with another proteins transducer proteins convert one signal form into a different signal form we'll talk about a specific example of this for example there's an enzyme called adenyl cyclase it's an enzyme when it is activated it causes formation of many cyclic amp molecules so it is acting as a transducer and an amplifier protein now i would like to mention three other type of proteins bifurcation protein they spread signal from one pathway to another so here signal is traveling in this direction they receive the signal and they send it sideways to other metabolic pathways or signaling pathways so integrator proteins do the reverse of bifurcation proteins they receive signals from different directions different pathways or different signaling molecules they integrate them before they relay the signal onward there's another type of protein called latent gene regulatory protein this is activated at cell surface after it has been activated by when the the receptor becomes activated it activates such type of proteins they travel they are activated at the surface they migrate to the nucleus where they result uh, stimulating they cause production of specific messenger rnas because they re recruit the transcription factors at a specific location at the dna so other important parts of the signaling system i would like to mention is small intracellular mediators these are produced and released in response to a signal when their their receptor receives a signal these small intracellular mediators or secondary messenger molecules that do not have an enzymatic activity of their own however they modify function of other molecules some of the small intracellular mediators we will be talking about in great detail are the cyclic amp right here dag diisoglycerol inositol triphosphate and of course calcium these are small molecules that do not have any enzymatic activity of their own but they modify enzymatic or they activate or deactivate enzymatic activity of other molecules also how signal is we mentioned that two cells receive the same signal same receptor so how is it different how do they produce two very different responses so the thing is that when a cell receives a signal it is being relayed onward there can be scaffold proteins here for example we have st5 and here we have pbs2 these proteins they are interacting with receptor and they are recruiting specific proteins so in this case for example st11 is activated and which is activating st7 here st11 
because adapter is different cannot activate this adapter cannot activate attach to T7 instead now the T11 is going to end up activation of hog protein so same ligand same receptor intracellular machinery one of those components called for example the scaffold protein if that is different the two cells will produce a different type of response so we have seen Uh, different examples of different proteins and how these signaling proteins that are assisting the signaling system what different roles these proteins can play uh, one of the most important concepts we talked about is how two cells same receptor binding the same ligand can produce different results one of the reasons is the internal machinery and also one of them one of the components of internal machinery is the scaffold protein which can result which can which has an important role in determining what kind of response cell is going to have once it receives the signal